What's up guys? This video is going to be a summary of my 351 build, um, including all the parts that went into it. And I just got done um, a session on the run stand here, um, breaking it in. And I guess just real quick, I'll go over what this motor is. It's a stock block, stock crank, stock stroke, uh, 30 over 357 cubic inches. It is a solid roller cam, 242 on the intake, 254 on the exhaust at 50 thousandths. Flat top pistons, it's got about 10 and a half to one compression ratio. Um, and I'll just get into the other details. I'll show you all the parts that went into it. All right, so here's what the engine looks like after the break-in session on the run stand. Did have the valve cover off to check the lash. I do plan to run stud girdles, but they would not clear my valve covers. I tried two different valve covers. I have a set of Ford Racing Steel valve covers, which were supposed to be tall, but I actually had the interference problems even without the stud girdle. Um, so that's why I'm using these taller Ford Motorsport covers, which are three and three quarters inches, I believe. But I also still had some slight interference with the stud girdles on these. I think I might be able to run these if I use a thicker cork gasket um, with the stud girdle. Uh, but the distributor, I plan to run an MSD with a 6AL box, but for, for the run stand, I'm using a older Mallory dual point distributor. Um, didn't feel like disconnecting the, six, the MSD box out of the car um, and hooking it up on the run stand, so I just ran points distributor. Um, but yeah, that's about it, and I'll just get into to the parts list and show you some assembly picks. I'll start off with a pick of my camshaft after it was installed. I installed the cam and the crank almost a year ago before putting this project on the back burner and then completing assembly more recently. And here's a pic of my cam card. I purchased the cam from Comp Cams via Brent Likens at Likens Motorsport. Brent spec the cam, it's a solid roller with a 242-254 duration split at 50 thousandths. The pistons I'm using are Wiseco. They're called Pro True Street. They're made from a 4032 forged aluminum alloy, which is not quite as strong as a 2068. Forged aluminum alloy used in some pistons. Uh, the ring sizes are 1 16th, 1 16th, 3 16th. You can see they've got a valve relief, um, 5cc volume on the valve relief. The rods I'm using are SCAT. Uh, they're forged I-beam. They're sort of stock looking, I'll say. They have ARP rod bolts, 3 8 inch ARP bolts. The part number on the pistons is right there. You can see the compression height is 1.769 inches. These pistons come as a set with the piston rings included, and I believe the rings are JE rings. Um, they are file fit rings. I believe they're the JE Sportsman series uh, with a plasma molly top ring and a standard tension oil ring. Wow, that was, that was crazy. He just fell right in. All right, the bottom end has been assembled for the most part. Rod bolts have been torqued, main bolts have been torqued. This is a Canton main girdle that I'll be using. Um, originally, I tried to use a trick flow main girdle, um, but I had to grind so much material away here uh, to clear on the oil pan and then some more material back here. I had to grind away that it, it became pretty much useless. I had removed so much material. Um, and so I'm using a Canton oil pan and this Canton main girdle, which I ended up getting after the trick flow, uh, works 
much better with their oil pan, maybe as you would expect. Should have bought it in the first place. Um, you can see the Canton main girdle has been machined on the main caps to sit down lower. Um, so that actually helps with the clearance problem. And it's also a little bit narrower. Um, whereas the trick flow, it used spacers and sat up higher or sat up uh, closer to the bottom of the oil pan. Um, and I'm going to be using a windage tray that bolts to the uh, main girdle at these locations. I'm using a Melling Select oil pump. This is a Canton pickup. You can also see the clearance. I had to clearance the oil pump. Um, so it cleared the main girdle in this location. Um, turn the engine over. Maybe I'll turn the engine over. All right. So I'm gonna test fit the oil pan. All right, let's check out the oil pan clearance. Looks like we're sitting at about a hair over three eighths. I think that's pretty good. Somewhere between three eighths and a half inch. Canton windage tray. Ought to be worth a few extra horsepower. The date code is shown here on the block 6F26, indicating it was made on June 26th, 1986. The timing chain set is from Lunati. There's a cast timing gear and a billet crank gear. I've got the camshaft installed straight up. Here's a look at my oil pan. This is a Canton road race style pan. This is a seven quart pan plus one quart for the oil filter. You can see there's a anti-slosh baffle. There's two trap doors to control oil. This is where the pickup goes. There's also a crank scraper that catches oil slinging off of the crankshaft. If you read the instructions for a Ford block, one of the Ford racing small blocks that they sell, they mention making use of a galley plug with a 30 thousandths hole drilled to lubricate the distributor gear. So here I've drilled a 30 thousandths hole in this galley plug. And here you can see the galley plug is installed with a 30 thousandths hole drilled. Uh, it's the galley plug in the upper right there where the distributor shaft comes down. I degreed the cam and it came in at 107 degrees intake center line, which matched the cam card spec. I'm using a Ford Performance timing chain cover. And this is the water pump I'm using. It's a Duralast piece. Um, it's an aluminum pump that I painted blue. the part number. Back to the pistons for a second. These Wiseco pistons that I'm using, I probably would not select them if I had to start over again. I originally decided to use these pistons when I was considering using my uh, the original engine in my car, which is a 69 block. I was considering using that as the basis for this build. And the Wiseco pistons, or pretty much any piston for a stock stroke stock rod 351 is going to give you zero deck relative to a 9.48 inch block. Um, in the case of these Wiseco pistons with a 1.769 compression height, they would be five thousandths in the hole on a 69 or 70 block. Um, but on a later block, they'll be approximately 28 thousandths in the hole. Um, but for my pistons, since my block's been decked, they're actually sitting 22 thousandths in the hole. Um, but you can gain a little more compression height on some pistons. For example, there's an Icon piston for a 351 that has a 1.774 compression height, so that'd be five thousandths closer to the deck. And, you know, 20 thousandths or more in the hole is really not any good unless you're trying to run a low compression 87 octane motor or running boost. Um, so I probably should have, have had my block decked another 15 or 20 thousandths 
Um, but to counteract where I'm at now, I decided to use a really thin MLS head gasket, which I'll show next. The head gaskets are Cometic MLS multi-layer steel. They're 23 thousandths of an inch thick. 4.100 inch diameter. And there's the part number. Here are my World Products Windsor Senior cylinder heads that I've done some work on. They now flow over 300 CFM at 600 thousandths lift. I've done a couple of videos on these heads, so go watch them. The solid roller lifters for this motor I've purchased from Lunati, although I'm sure they're made by either BAM or Morel. I think those are the two main suppliers of uh, solid roller lifters. And these are what I would call a budget solid roller lifter. Uh, you can buy a more expensive set that have a pressurized oil feed hole uh, to the needle bearings, which these don't have. Um, and you can see here's the part number for these lifters as well as the valve spring kit and the timing chain set that I bought from Lunati. I'm using 3 8 inch thick trick flow push rods, 8.45 inches in length with 135 thousandths wall thickness and I'm using comp cams guide plates for 3 8 inch push rods. Valve springs are installed with 245 pounds on the seat, 600 pounds open pressure, coil bind height is 1.050. Trick flow balancer. The crank pulley and water pump pulley are black anodized aluminum uh, V-belt pulleys. They're made by CBF Racing. And they look really nice. I'm really not a fan of these ARP head bolts. The bolt head is too short, making them prone to the socket, wanting to walk off when you're applying your final torque of 100 pound feet. Doesn't seem to matter whether I used a short socket or a tall socket. I busted my knuckles more than once, and you really have to lean on the head of the wrench to keep from doing so. Uh, the stock Ford bolts are at least a, the bolt head is at least a quarter inch taller. And in this sequence, I think that's probably my second take. I made it look good for the camera. Here are the stud girdles I'm planning to run. They're made by Jomar. I'm also running Comp Cam's Ultra Pro Magnum Steel Rocker Arms. I'm using Fell Pro 1262 R2 gaskets. These are 45 thousandths thick and they're wider and taller than uh, normal 1262 gaskets. The uh, 1262, they have different thicknesses. The R1 is 30 thousandths, the R2 is 45 thousandths, R3 is 60 thousandths, and so on. I think you can get them up to 90 thousandths or maybe 120. I did have to trim a little bit off these gaskets on the bottom, so the openings, but uh, yeah, they fit pretty well. Yeah, what's in the box? Some JBA long tube stainless headers for a 69 Mustang. Oh yeah, look at that. 
Those are the headers I'm running. The intake manifold bolts I'm using are Edelbrock 85, 84, 12 point plated bolts. And that about does it. Here's a couple last things. These are the valve covers I plan to run if I can get a set of valve cover spacers. The manifold I'm using, or the intake manifold, is an Edelbrock RPM air gap ported by Big Dogs Porting. The carburetor I'm using is a 750 CFM Race Demon, a Barry Grant carburetor. And if you're still watching, uh, let me know how much horsepower you think I'm going to make. I do plan to dyno this engine. So keep watching for a follow-up video, and thanks for watching. Here's a bonus shot of the combustion chamber looking up from the bottom of the cylinder.